career and a family. That is real progress. So even though we bemoan the fact that there isn't equality, we have to recognize the fact that we've had a lot of progress. And I still have a uh, We can wait, we can, we can spread the word. But uh, I have one question actually to Professor Bruce. Um, when you made your first discoveries that later led to the development of, of the, the quantum dots, could you foresee at that time all the revolution that we see today using quantum dots? Uh, no, really. That's, <clears throat> we thought that quantum dots might be useful in the transistor industry, in, but basically providing basic knowledge about how the properties of semiconductors would change at very small size. That was relevant to the design of computer chips. I had no, uh, no anticipation at all that they could be used as phosphors in tele televisions and things of that sort. I mean, looking back over a long time, most all the applications that people come up with are not the ones that uh, basic research scientists uh, were thinking about when they were working in the lab. It you know, typically works out that someone makes a discovery and then they think that it will be useful in a certain place. But in fact, if you talk to the people in that industry, it's not an important problem they're thinking about. Something else is a much more important problem, you know. So somebody will, you know, we publish our work and uh, other people read about it and they make, make a connection to the problems they're trying to solve in their in industry. You know, you have an inkling with what might happen, but you, there's just no way to know for sure. Hmm. It's extremely hard to predict future technology. Hmm. And if I, I ask Dr. Yekimov, uh, I guess I get, will get a similar answer. When you did the first experiments with nanocrystals in glass, could you foresee that it will be made soon later than in, in, in the solution and then in the way we see quantum dots today? Everything is going, going little by little. I mean, no rush. And it was not, it is not possible to uh, push something faster or not, because it is uh, a natural process. If some uh, uh, problem is solved, the problem will find the people who need this decision. I think, again, it's natural process, natural, as it was, you know, about uh, men and women. When I came to America, I've seen some occasionally uh, demonstration. And on the road, there was a man, elderly man, and it was placard. Man or woman, decision of the Lord. And that's it. That's, I know, everything is told. That should be like this. Not the subject of discussion. Woman uh, should decide. That's not, or, well, that's my opinion. Oh. Okay, um, other questions, yeah, please. Hi, I'm Gafili from uh, Nordic Chinese Times. I have a question for pro uh, Professor uh, Claudia Gordon. Uh, from your amazing academic work, we learned that uh, girls will form their uh, expectations uh, of their future expectations from their mother's generation, but it's not always the case because there's a gap in the um, time period. Uh, my question is, uh, how important would you value the re-education of the adults to the mothers, and would that make any impact to the uh, growth uh, educational expectations? It was a bit difficult to hear. Can you just recapitulate the, the core question? Very close to the mic, please. Okay. Um, in, in very short, very, and very close. Uh, can you hear me now? Oh. Uh, I'm wondering how would you, uh, uh, what impact would you value the re-education of the adults uh, to the mothers? Would that make any difference to the impact of uh, uh, gross future educational in, uh, expectations? Well, I'm, I'm going to answer as I think I understand the question, which is that uh, there are generations and there are parents, there are children. And it's often the case in countries that experience very 
rapid economic, educational, social change that the parents have different expectations than what the children see as what they ought to be doing. And these expectations are codified in norms and traditions. And these often hold countries back in terms of economic development. And it's one of the reasons why many of the countries that have had the fastest economic change <clears throat> now have the slowest uh, rates of fertility, of total factor, of total fertility rate. It's an extremely important issue and not one that we can easily solve because uh, it has to do with rapid economic change, and that's a good thing. Thank you. If there are any questions to Professor, Professors Agostini and Levier, you're welcome to ask them. Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Bettina Bernadotte from the Lindau Nobel Laureate Meetings. Uh, it's a meeting where Nobel Laureates meet the next generation of scientists. And my question would be, if you had to give an advice uh, to the next generation scientists, what would it be? Uh, what made your life as a scientist worth all the hardships in it? Yeah. Please. Um. <laughs> I think uh, the, my advice would be, if you like to do uh, to a young um, person, if you like to do uh, physics, uh, just go for it, follow your intuition and, and uh, um, go for it. This is my advice. Don't listen to too many people, just uh, follow your, uh, your intuition. Uh, can I ask a question to Professor Agostini? Uh, what, what do you think that uh, Nobel Prize will mean to the field of at, at the second physics? Well, uh, will it speed up further developments? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, what about Zepto Sekot or, <laughs> or Yokto Sekot? Uh, yeah, not Ato Sekot. This is killed, overkill. Uh, uh, yeah. I would not give any advice for that. Well, uh, no. But uh, if I ask all of you, do you think that the prize in itself will sort of promote further developments? Will it be more excitement, more interest in, in your respective fields? Yeah, I think it absolutely does. It uh, puts visibility on, on our field of research and also uh, uh, people start to think about uh, maybe possible applications in other domains. So I think it's, it's very important. And we see that already. We have maybe uh, students that are interested in. So uh, it's definitely uh, very important. And the prize is an incredible encouragement uh, that uh, what we are doing is not just out of fun, but uh, maybe one day uh, some important uh, uh, developments uh, and important applications will, will emerge from the discoveries that we have made. Yes, please. Hello, good morning. Hungarian television, public media. My name is Elod Palpal. I have a question to actually the all three of you, the laureates in physics, regarding your cooperation as uh, you are sharing this prize and you have the discovery, all three of you. Did you all have, during this whole time of your discovery, the common sense and uh, you did not have any fight about the truth, the reality? Were you all convinced about this fact or you had to persuade one another and convince you? Well, if I, if I may start, uh, um, uh, I, I think um, uh, our example provides actually a, a beautiful or our case provides a beautiful example for how science actually can work uh, and, and can bring together ideas even without the actual people uh, behind those ideas knowing each other. So we did not have, at least uh, from my end, we did not have any close cooperation, but I personally benefited a lot from, from the work of uh, both Anne and Pierre and uh, felt uh, fertilized and felt inspired uh, by, by that work. I, I can add a comment uh, on this. Actually, this field of research uh, is very much European. 
uh, has been uh, very strong in Europe, and the reason is uh, actually support from the European Union since a, lo a long time with uh, European networks that make all people meet and exchange ideas. So I, I believe that this was, uh, and really from uh, the 90s, we, we have been meeting uh, at these European uh, networks and, and uh, exchange ideas. So I think this is very nice instruments from the European Union. I hope they continue with that. Perhaps uh, with one uh, little addition, Euro plus a very, a very big stronghold uh, based in Ottawa by the activities of Paul Corkum. Okay, time is running, so I think uh, we have to let that be the last question. Uh, again, thank you for the laureates coming here to take part in this press conference. Uh, I thank all of you for, for coming here. Um, and tomorrow we have the prize lectures to be given by our laureates in Aula Magna at Stockholm University. So I look forward to seeing all of you there. Thank you. Sure, sure. Stand up or?